Let me show you guys how we made our turkey this year. Every year, we always try to make our turkey different. And this year, I decided to deep fry it. So I'm going to begin by brining my turkey using all the ingredients I'm going to list on the screen. I always make this a little on the concentrated side, and then I just mix equal parts water, only because I'm too impatient to actually wait there for the whole pot to cool down. But anyways, once it comes to a boil, I'm going to put it into a bigger pot where I add equal parts water and ice. Then I stick my turkey into the pot, put it in the fridge, and let this brine overnight. The next day, I rinse the brine off, and then I I pat the whole turkey dry with the napkin then we vaccinate our turkey using some melted butter and mojo even the turkeys get vaccinated or else you're not coming to the party just kidding guys it's a joke now i'm gonna coat my turkey using some flour and some cajun seasoning because we want our turkey to be nice and crispy using my deep fryer i'm gonna fry my turkey at 350 degrees for about 42 minutes oh my god she burned the turkey it's not burnt guys it is crispy and that's it guys hope you like this recipe. Bye! Let me show you guys how I made my spicy cranberry sauce. To my bag, I'm gonna add half a bag of cranberries and half a cup of brown sugar and the juice of an orange. Now, I must confess, we're not big fans of cranberry sauce because they're too sweet. So this year, I decided to make mine with a little kick and I'm gonna add three habaneros. Just make sure that when you add your peppers, you either crush or dice and you're not struggling like me trying to smash them in between cooking. Just add a little salt and let this simmer for about five minutes until it becomes a jelly. And if it's too thick, just add a couple tablespoons of water. Hope you like my recipe. Bye! Let me show you guys how I made my turducken. For those who don't know, it's turkey, duck, and chicken. Every year, I always try to do my turkey a different way, and this year, I decided to make it into a turducken roll. So I laid some turkey breast flat on a piece of surround wrap, seasoned it up, and then I add a layer of stuffing. I then add my duck breast, and then I seasoned it up, put more stuffing, my chicken breast, and then I seasoned that up, add more stuffing. Then I rolled it up, secured it with cooking string, and then I rolled it up again using the surround wrap super tightly. I rolled it up, and then I stuck it in the fridge for a couple of hours because i wanted it to keep its shape after a couple of hours i took it out seasoned it up some more mind you these seasonings have little to no salt put it in a ziploc bag with a little bit of butter and cooked it for four hours using my sous vide i then removed it seared it with some butter and herbs guys please give my sister some attention she was like dying to be on the frame do you guys see her doing the most oh my gosh anyways so i'm just gonna cut it up and look how amazing this looks this was my first time actually doing this and i didn't want to tell anybody that there was duck in there but every time they try something new that i make they're always like hmm what did she do this time i did end up telling them that there was duck after they were licking their fingers and telling me how amazing it was and then freaked out but anyways hope you like this recipe bye Let me show you guys how to make a green pozole. To your pot, you're going to add all these ingredients I'm going to list on the screen and bring your pot to a boil. Meanwhile, I'm going to cut up my meat. I'm using pork and chicken. And for the pork cut, I'm going to use a picnic roast or you can use pork shoulder, anything that has bone. Except pork chops. Don't use pork chops. We're going to add our pork to our boiling water. My water wasn't boiling fast enough, so I just added my pork in there because I was in a rush. Then I cover it up, let my pork cook for about 45 minutes. Meanwhile, we're going to make the green sauce. For the green sauce, you're going to need chile poblanos, tomatillos, jalapeños, or serranos you're also going to need a big handful of cilantro we're going to char the pasilla peppers yes papi said chile we're going to char the pasilla peppers and then we peel the skins off before you add everything to your blender you can also pre-boil your tomatillos and chiles but in this case like i said i was in a rush so i just threw them in the raw you're also going to add a quarter piece of onion two to three garlic cloves and a quick tip when you're making your pozole if you want it to be a little bit more thicker just add about a cup of hominy and blend everything now we just add a big can of hominy the green sauce that we just blended our chicken because this is pork and chicken and i don't want to hear oh my gosh this is not how you do pozole this is how i do my pozole okay yeah. then you cover it up and continue cooking for about another 40 minutes once the chicken is super tender then your pozole is ready last thing to do is to add a big handful of crushed up oregano and then i serve it in a big pop up plate with all of the toppings but first i'm going to squeeze a little bit of lemon juice or lime juice then i add some cabbage some onion and cilantro some radishes and some avocado you can never forget your chili oil because the buttholes are gonna be burning tonight and that's it guys this is how i make my green pozole hope you like this recipe bye
We're making a quick breakfast at Nana Joe's. I'm making a Monte Cristo on roids. So in between two buns, we're going to add some ham and cheese and then we're going to smash it. And then I repeat the process. We're going to double stack this. Yeah, I know. Double the cholesterol. Who cares? It is my cholesterol. In a bowl, I'm going to add about four eggs. And since I'm lazy AF, I'm going to use coffee creamer because it already has sugar and cream. I'm going to put a little bit of Flavor God's buttery cinnamon roll. Now we're just going to whisk the batter together. Grab your sanguis, dip it, and make sure that you get both sides. Be super careful because things tend to come out then i butter up my pan make sure it's nice and buttery and get my sandwich crispy on all of the sides but meanwhile i'm gonna cook some eggs on the other side of the pan and yes i'm finessing the system i'm gonna season them with bacon lovers because i got no bacon and when i say make sure it's crispy on all the sides i mean all the sides this sandwich right here guys was my go-to when i was pregnant with my first child and let me tell you get ready for it it is so freaking bomb look at all that cheese oozing i'm just gonna dust it with a little powder sugar our leftover habanero cranberry sauce and that's it guys hope you like this recipe bye let me show you guys how i made my dragon fruit pomegranate lemonade you're gonna need dragon fruit now this was my first time actually having a red one and let me tell you the pigment is insane don't forget to reserve some for garnish um this yellow one froze and then thawed in my fridge so it looks like this but it's totally fine always reserve some for garnish we're also gonna need some pomegranates and i already showed you guys lots of times how to open a pomegranate but here i show you guys again a little quick version of how to open okay i'm missing the spankings i just saw that no wonder this damn video was too damn short anyways i guess we need lemon now for the lemonade part i'm using lines but you can use lemon and i just peel the rinds off instead of squeezing the juice out because last time i did that i noticed that the lemon taste was more intense but anyways we're gonna add everything to our blender along with our cup of sugar wink wink and then we blend everything together this was the water that i took to familia fuego's house and a lot of them were asking me for the recipe so guys here it is and then i just pour all my garnish into a pitcher equal parts water and ice and that's it guys hope you like this recipe bye Let me show you guys how I made my pomegranate orange agua fresca. Here, I got a couple of pomegranates that I got from some of my lovely followers. I was desperate for pomegranates, so I went begging on my Instagram, and someone said that they had a tree, and they got me some. You guys are peeling your pomegranates. If you guys ever get that little white stuff, that is bitter. You don't want that. And to take it off, just add some water to your bowl, and all the white stuff just floats to the top, and you stay with all these beautiful pomegranate seeds. And not only did they get me pomegranates, they also got me oranges. And that's where the pomegranate orange idea came from. So I just removed the rinds, risk serve some for garnish then i throw everything into my blender along with your cup of sugar i say wink wink because i don't put a cup of sugar i put a lot of sugar and i refuse to tell you guys but anyways we're gonna blend until smooth and always and i mean always strain those pomegranate seeds then i pour it into my pitcher add some ice and then fill up the rest with water this is a three-quart pitcher mix everything together now this is the perfect time for you to check for sweetness some people like it more sweet some people don't. So if you need more sugar, add more sugar. If it's too sweet, just add more water. That's my disclaimer, guys. Fill up your favorite cup with ice, add a little bit of pomegranate seeds, a little bit of orange, and then pour yourself some delicious and refreshing pomegranate orange agua fresca. And there you have it, guys. Now I'm just gonna add a matching straw to my cup. And that's it. Hope you like this recipe. Bye.